Have you ever wanted something so bad you could taste it? Have you ever needed something so much you'd give up everything, including your own family, to get it? Well, that's what's happened to me. My name is Evie St. James, formerly Evelyn McDonald, but that's another matter. Growing up, I always did know I was a very attractive girl, which I suspect explains why someone looking for a part-time model decided I was a perfect someone. Don't get me wrong, I could tell how I made other girls feel by the fact that their boyfriends all tended to have red welts across their arms and chest whenever I passed them. But in all my modeling, even though I was approached by several, quote, legitimate, close quote, magazines, I never took off my top of my pants. Anyway, it was shortly after graduation that I was approached by an agency to be their model exclusively. I could then do runway shows, and it was there I met a photographer named Jefferson. Long story short, I ended up marrying the guy. This led to 17 happy years of marriage, but we even had one daughter that we named Melissa. Jefferson was doing so well in writing a magazine about them that he was really raking in the cash. And then I caught him having an affair with his secretary, Stephanie. That's how you ended up being a single mom. Melissa was ordered into my custody as a well as half a million dollars every year. Also, he bought us a dream house, at least for me. One that had a fully workable kitchen, a workout room, and most importantly, at least to me, the space for a garden. Now, don't misunderstand, I know the idea of being a stay-at-home mom is kind of a turn-off for most girls. I wasn't like that. I just love to cook by making things grow. The kind of satisfaction that gives you isn't something that's easy to describe. Also, I feel like it's been shaped and it shows when I do my gardening. Not because of the plants, but because when I'm working on them, I have an old flannel shirt that I wear, often with the top tie. I have all sorts of guys checking me out, but even though they, I knew almost every time, I'd only smile at them and wave, and they'd usually disappear in short order. It was one of those times I heard a different engine come into our driveway. I checked the time, pulled a few more weeds, then walked in to see what was going on. There, my daughter Melissa stood next to a tall boy. I looked between them until Melissa stammered off a bit. Hi, Mom. My car broke down and I got a ride from Adam. I stepped forward, then I guess you're a bit of a hero, Adam. My name's Evie. I extended my hand and he shook it, suddenly pausing. I had to apologize, so I might be back then after I changed my shirt and got a shower. And then I make sure dinner would be to die for. Now I will grant you this, Melissa definitely inherited her looks from me, but she had a mind that could grasp things I never thought of, and sometimes I got a little jealous of her. I don't tell her, of course. I don't want her to go through the same stresses I went through. The pressure to be the hottest sometimes makes take a toll on a model, making many of them do unthinkable things not only to keep their bodies looking fabulous, but also taking things in order to cope. That's why many models do the new thing, even though I made it very clear I never would. I thought Adam saw something he liked in my daughter, even though I couldn't help getting the feeling that he was as soon as I got inside, checking me out. Anyway, after dinner, I invited him to stay. He told me he had to study and said goodbye to Melissa. Again, I had the feeling that there was something going on there. Almost like he knew he was checking me out, even though I steered the conversation more Melissa's way. Over the next few weeks, I saw a lot more of him. He and Melissa had often had, quote, steady dates, close quote, but I got the feeling Melissa was wanting him to really take the nubs in her. So nights, the three of us would sit on the den and pop on a DVD, pop a lot of popcorn and watch our favorites, even some of Adam's. <laughs> well, <coughs> when Melissa came home one afternoon, huffed, then threw her hands in the air, I could tell something really was getting to her. Sweetie, what's wrong? She called me in frustration. Sometimes it's not easy being your daughter. That had me worried. What, what happened now? I only asked her because some of the guys she brought home before were obviously more attracted to me than to her. It's not that it isn't flattering. The attention was always on me, but I also knew they were complimenting me, so I let it go. None of them seemed even was aside anyway. Since he did all this happen, he's more into you than it, he is me. So it was after she was like, really interested. As the realization came, another one also crept in. But it was so diabolical. So inherently dirty, it had to be a good one. Apparently, she 
recognize the look. What do you have in mind, Mom? It was so subtle, so disarming that I just grinned. Don't you worry, baby girl. Once this plan happens, I will forget about me entirely. Over the next few weeks, I began to change things in very subtle ways. When he'd say for dinner, Adam always got a slightly bigger portion. And for those nights we'd see him and watch movies, I made sure I was next to him. I was with it, and by the end, we would take turns up and pop our cows in his mouth. But things really got heated up when he got out our pool open. Normally, I'd save my bikinis for our canning bed and bring out the one piece for the pool. Yeah, we got his hands on wet, but they were very nice to some Still, this time, I need an exception. I really wanted Adam to get a good look at the significantly older single mother to see that this one had a particularly hot body. It was all for show, mind you. It's preparing for the final stage, but it did feel particularly nice when Adam was unable to take his eyes off me. I knew then that a couple more things would be all I needed to make sure Adam would finally hear Melissa calling for him and to rescue her again. When the day came, I had four major fears about what I was going to do. The first was that Adam wouldn't be able to stop himself from what I was going to put him through. The second was that he, I wouldn't stop myself and I'd break Alyssa's heart in the process. The third was that Adam would get very angry, lash out at me, and hurt me. The fourth was that Adam would think he was wrong and force himself on me. There is a word. A label used to describe someone like me, someone who was planning on taking a much younger man on a date. It wasn't easy for me to do this, knowing that it may back there. My hope was that they would say this label on me since I wasn't really for romantic reasons at all. Still, I guess I was about to enjoy the le legions of single moms that were often called Cooper, even though it wasn't for me. <coughs> So here I was, putting on the outfit Melissa chose my date with her future love. She chose well a pair of hip hugger jeans that were tied at the top, showing enough minutes to leave nothing to chance and ensuring that less than fleet did as well. Then my daughter sprang a torture on me to be sure I didn't forget it in the shape of a pair of high heeled shoes. I always hated them because they'd hurt, but my daughter convinced me I'd need most of them went to prepare for her part in the attack game, and I got ready to spring. I called it Cell. Uh, hello, Adam. I was wondering if you could help me with something. Yes, it's a bit of a change, but how about I leave for coffee and see what comes up? You will? Good. Thanks. See you there about six. Good. I could tell he had no idea what was about to happen. Truth be told, I wasn't entirely really sure myself. It's a real confidence booster when younger guys get some lucky at me. But it was never much more than just a few seconds when it was I was used to that. But to deliberately put myself out there was something else entirely. I didn't really know if it would even work. But what Adam didn't know was about to be this biggest shock in his life. 6 p.m. came and went, and I still hadn't shown up. I put on my makeup and everything was set, but I wanted to see how patient he would be. I finally went in about 10 minutes later and saw him sitting there, copies already in hand. When he saw me, his face was really confused, but I made sure mine lit up when he finally noticed me. I made sure he saw me in the outfit, as if it were a regular thing, one where he knew he was fantasizing about me, one I wanted him to fantasize about. I'm so sorry, I just got so busy, I barely had time to change my clothes. I saw him struggle for a moment with the concept. Uh, no, it, it's fine. I hope you don't mind. I already eat for you already. He stood and made his way around the table and pulled out my seat. I had to admit that impressed me. Not many guys would do that these days, and for a moment I felt justified in this impromptu date. Old fashioned manners. I love the idea. So we sat, me seeming to eagerly listen to his tale of school sports. This wasn't news to me as Melissa made sure I knew a few things ahead of time. I made sure to make my most flirtatious giggle while sipping on the drink, but something was happening with me. I had to excuse myself to the bathroom once. There, instead of using it, I had to calm my raging heart down and remind myself, this is for Melissa, Evie. You're only doing this to get him to Melissa. When I went back 
out. I was laughing to myself. What's so funny, Evie? I had to wait, putting another layer on the plant. How do you like eating a much older woman? He dropped his coffee. When we got home, I stopped at the door, slightly blocking the passage. I stood my back to the frame. Adam, what would you do if I said I wanted you to kiss me as passionately as you possibly can? As he leaned over me, I felt my heart starting to race. He leaned in closer and closer, stopping just short of contact. Every part of me felt the rush, the sheer anticipation as he headed like that one more second. I managed to breathe before he closed the gap. I don't watch or read science fiction very much. I find that most of the, those creations are either way out of this world or the writers have overactive imaginations. Still, one science fiction idea that sprang to life. His lips pressed into mine gently at first, but I found myself transported to another dimension. I could see myself seriously falling for this kid. I can imagine a life with him as our kiss grew even more intense. I could almost see everything our life could be except for one thing. What is it? Screw it. I broke the kiss, giggling a little. That was really nice. I thought you might be near the bottom of the 26, but you were definitely on the top five. I had to separate from him. It all for Moses' happiness and not some wild flavor. I saw the confusion on his face and he watched on what I was saying. Top five. I turned, trying to make my eyes look a little crazy. I guess it worked. Oh, yes. You look completely confused. Top five foot. I played with the buttons on his shirt for a minute, knowing I was messing with him big time. The top five lovers I've had. He gently took my wrist. Top five lovers? Out of how many? I looked up at his beautiful eyes with an innocence I managed to layer on. 26, well, 27, including you. He gently pushed me away. Does Melissa know? I giggled. Probably. Honestly, I don't even know if she is my ex-husband or one of the other three. I love while we were still married. He stepped away and I eagerly pursued him. I will admit now I was having a bit of fun. What happened to the other guys? I managed a little bit of crazy laugh, smiling serenely. He says they were all guys. That stopped him and I stopped as well. This was getting more fun, this part of my play. Why? I just looked like I had no idea what he meant. Well, 26 deaths are a lot. He moved into the living room, still backing away from me. I was almost there. You're crazy! I smiled as I moved in, trying to look as eager as I could. My hands looking like they wanted to rip something off. The best ones say that. I have now pinned against one of the walls. Kiss me again, then we can go into my bedroom. To his credit, he did the next thing as a means of defense. I really left him no alternative. He shoved me hard enough to knock me down. No! I was scared a bit, but I knew I was almost there. I bit my tailbone, but that was you. You mean you want it rough? I can do rough. He was angry, and I could see it. No, you're insane! I don't want to date you if you're crazy. I folded my knees into my chest, hoping he wouldn't see the look of almost triumph on my face as I turned away from him. Only a little more. He said, I made it sound like I was crying. You, you mean you don't even care about me? It took a minute. But he put his head on my shoulder. You mean I care about you and Lucy a great deal. I just can't believe this. Someone as wonderful as her wouldn't see this. That was exactly what I was waiting for. The crying suddenly turned to a low chuckle. It worked. The whole manic plan worked. There was no more acting on my part as I turned to face him. Good to hear. I was wondering how far I'd have to push to get you to admit that. He was confused again, and I couldn't blame him. I reached out my... So that's him. Help me I hope you enjoyed this little bit of fun. I had a great time writing this story. And this part of an anthology that I've been working on. As always, please subscribe and share what you think. Check out some of the other videos like this one. And give me a comment on it. You should know. I don't want to do like this for a little while. And I don't want to do like this for a little while. The top five and view posts will keep going. And subscribe and we'll let you know when I put it on the link. And the likes on the highest will let you know. I haven't killed anyone.